Today we want to take a closer look at how a splitter works. We will learn what a splitter is, how it can help you to make your car faster and how it affects the rest of the aerodynamics. To explain this I created an example car. It's a simple car shape with a frontal area of around 2 square meter and a drag coefficient of 0.3, so a fairly standard car. The wheels are rotating, the floor is closed and there is a slight rear diffuser. The car's shape with lots of round edges is designed to avoid unwanted separations which could influence the results. And at the back the car has a clear separation line all around to create constant wake. To explain all effects of the splitter I also added a radiator, an inlet at the front and outlets in the wheel arch, like many cars have, and to not disturb underbody flow. We simulate the car in a straight line at 200 km per hour and we use AirShaper for this. It's an open foam based platform and has a user interface which makes it super easy to set up your own simulations. So I uploaded my car, I set my parameters and it even automatically identified the four wheels to rotate them. So the base version of our car does not have a splitter. Lift at the front axle sits pretty much at zero and we have some downforce at the rear due to the 5 degree diffuser. At the front we can see that there is a high pressure area and the cooling inlet sits exactly there. So we get the highest pressure for our cooling inlet and a good cooling flow. The first modification we will do is to change the lower round edge to a sharp edge. A few things happen now. First of all, the area which is pushing air in front of the car is slightly bigger, so the high pressure area at the front extends a bit downwards. So the stagnation point at the front moves a bit downwards, which means more air is pushed up. And if air goes up, car goes down. So we get a bit more downforce from that. The more significant change however is happening underneath. The round edge before at our base version kept the flow attached. There were no separation bubbles and a clean flow to the diffuser. The sharp edge now lets less air flow underneath the car and creates separation. The result is that the pressure underneath the front is lower, hence we get a lot more front downforce. But because there is less air flowing to the diffuser and it's also disturbed by the earlier separation, we lose quite a bit of rear downforce. In the end we can say that by changing the lower edge to a sharp one we get a more balanced car with more front and less rear downforce at pretty much the same overall downforce. The drag increases by around 10%. Now let's introduce a splitter. We create a 10 cm long splitter and make it extra fat for more stability and the chance for a big radius at the edges for less separations. The splitter is flush with the underbody and as wide as the car, so the frontal area stays the same. What happens now is that air is blocked from flowing underneath the car. So more air is being trapped at the front, there is a bigger high pressure area which increases drag and inlet pressure for the cooling. The splitter is now, as the name states, splitting the air at the front. We keep the high pressure area above and have a bigger low pressure area below so the resulting force is more front downforce. Because we created a fat round splitter we can keep the underbody flow mostly attached and avoid a huge separation bubble. That way we can actually reduce some drag and we get a cleaner flow to the rear diffuser, which can now reach almost the downforce level of our base model. So overall for this small splitter version we can increase front downforce and if we design it sensibly we can keep the drag low and the diffuser working. Because we push around more air lower at the front also the stagnation point moves a bit downwards and now the cooling inlet position isn't perfect anymore. But mass flow stays similar to previous versions. In the next step we now double the size of the splitter to 20 cm. So it's basically the same case, just with stronger effects. We trap even more air at the front, have a larger high pressure area on top of the splitter and a bigger low pressure area below. So we get more front downforce but also block more air to flow to the diffuser, which means we get a bit less rear downforce as a result. The stagnation point at the front lowers further and now we get the problem that air needs to flow up across the sharp edge to reach the radiator. It separates at this lower sharp edge and we get some losses on the radiator net, which reduces cooling flow. 
This is counteracted by the higher pressure at the front, but here it would make sense to round the lower edge to get more cooling flow. And we have the possibility to blank this intake from above for less drag. Overall drag stayed around the same compared to the shorter splitter. But here we have to say that you have to be careful with long splitters on a car, since it could choke your diffuser under braking, leading to entry oversteer. So it makes sense to raise the center of the splitter or even point it upwards to feed the underbody with air. The last version should show you a simple but brutal way to increase front downforce. You can see that we have a good high pressure area above this splitter, but we don't use the whole splitter surface. So if we trap more air on top of the splitter, we can generate more downforce. An easy way is to simply add end plates. The flow is slowed down, pressure increases, and the only way out is above. And if air goes up, car goes down. Of course, this also creates a massive side vortex from the high pressure area to ambient pressure. We had separation bubbles here before from the wheel arch, but we have a massive additional vortex now, which travels along the side of the front wheels. This one can help us to suck more air from the wheel arch, which can help if you run a front diffuser. Needless to say that trapping more air in front is also increasing drag quite significantly. But we can increase downforce a bit. This is what we call dirty downforce, so an increase of downforce for a pretty big drag penalty. Since we divide downforce by drag to get the efficiency, this is not a very efficient solution, and typically for races where you have overpowered cars and top speed is not so important, like Monaco in F1 or the Pikes Peak hill climb. So I hope you found that interesting and it cleared up some questions about the use of splitters. Check out AirShaper to run your own simulations and if you need help in your project, especially for aerodynamics or cooling, feel free to contact me. Check out my other videos for more and see you at the next one.